Good morning. Right. Um, so it's been a weekend since my last recording. It's now Monday. Uh, let's see where we were last Friday. We had we had this, and we had. Uh, end date control that wasn't working basically um, I think as soon as we picked something yeah it wasn't updating the, the date um, and I was in a little bit of a um, analysis paralysis when it came to how I was going to manage that control because it had uh, it doesn't work the way that my data works so Let's uh, go see the code, and uh, maybe fresh eyes will give us a different perspective on things, and maybe uh, I'll be able to come up with an easier way of working with this data. Okay, so that's the date input. Let it go. Okay. When I was um, uploading this, the, yeah, the last video, I did notice that I had a little typo here. Put an extra curly bracket there somehow. So we'll just uh, save that. I don't think it'll make much difference. I think that will get um, uh, discarded by the compiler, but that's done now anyway. That's fixed up. So. Um, the data we've got here coming in is a yeah, is a Unix style timestamp. Um, so that's second since the Unix epoch, um, nineteen seventy. Um, but in the date input, the value is actually a string. So we need to do some manipulation, um, some sort of martian of that, uh, the Unix timestamp. Um, why am I calling it Unix day? It's not a Unix date, it's a timestamp. Let's change that. I'll just fix that around here as well. Yeah, that's better. Okay, um, that makes more sense. So I'm getting that in. Oh, and the default, that should also be math.seal. Because we always want to have an integer there. We don't really want to have a floating point on that. Okay. So we've got the Unix timestamp coming in. And got the name, the ID. I think I might change that ID in a minute, but we'll come back to that. It's not the first thing. Okay, so let's. Let's think. We want to update the timestamp, so all right, okay. But we want the value to be based on. Okay. Also, while I was updating, uh, uploading the video, I noticed that when I was reading the docs for the date constructor, I just read it as being it always took a date string. Uh, but there is an alternative. You can just pass in a um, uh, a timestamp as well. So. Uh, I can do that. So what I can do there is for my default. So this is if nothing's passed in. We've got the Unix timestamp, which is now, but in seconds. Let's do Unix timestamp multiplied by a thousand to get the milliseconds. And then the date value is going to be the ISO version of that. Um, 
but we don't we don't need to bind that value because I think we need to do something else here. Let's just do uh, Monday morning first thing. What's going on? Something on the on my keyboard there. There we go. Okay. But what we do need is a way of returning the value change to the Unix timestamp. So change. Let's do that. And change. Let's call a handle change function. And in that function, <clears throat> called handle change, we're going to get an event. It's just a normal DOM event for an input change. Um, and we just want to update the Unix timestamp. So Unix timestamp is going to be equal to that events. Target. Dot value. <clears throat> but But that's a string. So we just need to convert that. We need to pass. We need to pass that into a date string. So that will be, I believe there's a date pass. And it's put, that should be okay because Because it's an ISO version string that I think we get. We'll check that in a minute. So that's going to be. I better check the, what we get back on that date to pass. What does it? Does it return a timestamp or a date object? Let's find out. Back to MDN. Pass a string representation, a day returns the number of milliseconds. Okay, perfect. Pass a string pass a strong. Okay. But we're getting an ISO. Well, I believe we're getting an ISO-ish string back from the input type. So we should be okay. <laughs> I guess we'll see in a minute. All right, so we've got that, but we need that. We actually want the Unix timestamp, so we're going to divide by a thousand, uh, and that will need to be mathed. Okay. So we're passing the string date, which is going to give us a timestamp, which we're going to divide by a thousand. And work back in the Unix timestamp whenever this changes. We have a default coming in, which is the date now in seconds. And we're using that to set an ISO string on the value, which I believe is what we need. Okay, and on the edit goal, we have a default coming in. So we've got the same default coming in, which is finer for the moment. I might change that in a bit. Um, and then, 
I don't know why he does that. By units down to the goal end date, which we just got up there. Okay, well, that looks all right. Let's give that a whirl, see if that updates the goal. And then if that updates the goal, the title is going to get updated reactively here. Okay. Let's deploy that and see what happens. <clears throat> So it's a clean build there. Just npm problems. Okay, so we've got. Uh, took a little while. All right, push that. Still not getting a default there. I'll have to look that in a minute. Hey, okay. There we go. Can I change 22? Let's do December. So when it does that, that's not a great picker, is it? Because you'd really want to pick that. Oh, well, it'll do for the moment. I need to sort out that reason as well in a minute. Um, okay, so everything's kind of reactor still. Nothing's broken there. That's good. Okay. So why... Why is this input not... getting set to a date at the beginning? Let's have a look. So, everything should be so the value is that That looks all right. When I update this, is it updating the timestamp? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to see the value update there because I'm not binding it. Let's check that. Let's go back and quickly bind again. Um. Just so we can double check what value. That's just a quick and easy way of doing a check to see what value is actually um, being set by the input. Because I can't quite remember. I think it might be a uh, year dash month dash day and nothing else. And so I wouldn't be surprised if I have to pass that in to get it to be. So it picks up the initial value correctly as well, because it probably is not understanding a full day at the moment. Maybe that's a limitation of, I don't know, Firefox's implementation, or I don't know. Um, so, okay, let's have a quick look at the date again. Right, so it's, we're passing in at the moment that full there. Yeah, okay. That's probably the limitation there. All right, so in that case, um, our initial value from the timestamp value because we only want this to be a 
Unix input. It's going to be substring and a new one, thanks. Zero. Uh, JavaScript works weirdly, doesn't it? Assume between the start and end days is always index start to the first code to be excluded here. Yeah. I always get caught out by that. Um, in JavaScript, you have to do the first inclusive sub uh, first character to be included, and then the end point is the one that's the first to be excluded instead of doing like uh, from this to this you're doing from this until this okay Oops. so that that's going to trim out 40 yeah so that's 10 so that should do it So that should get the first 10 characters of the date string, which is going to be the year, year, month, day, and the two dashes. So there we go. E, there we go. That's better. So every time I refresh it, it's doing it. And if I go down and change that to, ooh, that's not great. Hmm. I don't think there's much I could do about that though, because that seems to be the actual time the input anyway. This is just a rough, just a rough prototype. Um, we can always swap out that input. I just want to get it kind of working. That's all. So, all right. Well, that's okay. So we kind of have a working component there-ish. Um, oh, we got. Got an end date input. It's doing the job. All right then. Let's um, now. I think we. All right. Let's commit that. I think before I start doing anything else. Cause it's kind of working. I think I need to do a few uh, little fix ups to it, but it's good so far. It's working. What's changed here? Let's change. Right. Basic. Date input. Okay. All right. So I'm actually passing. Yeah, in the component, I'm I'm using the name for both the ID. And the actual name and value, but I should make it so that these can be independent. Um, let's test that. Let's uh, let's make that standard thing there, just so it's it's different. Um, <clears throat> and then, all right, so we're passing an ID. Does that, we need to actually just uh, ripple that through. 
So actually, I will do ID equals standard. Post ID, I think. So in theory, that will pass in. A property which has the ID. I wonder if what will happen when I would do. <laughs> if I don't pass it, I wonder what will happen. We'll check that in a sec. Let's just see if that actually passes through as I expected. Okay, that's cool. That's that sorted then. Oh, we don't need to use that, that's fine. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, let's do a quick... Is it going to go bang? Yeah, if I take that out. The compiler didn't complain. And neither did that. That's good. Okay. Um, right, but I actually want that anyway, so we'll do that. So that's fine. Explicit, but at least it's um, inconsistent. Okay. Quickly commit that off as well, because that's not going to be relevant to the next change. Um, this ID. Ah! Monday morning typing. Right, so we now have a working component there, but it's using today's date as the end date for a goal, uh, which you're never going to use. Uh, you always want an end date, which is going to be some attainable um, distance away. You're going to be at minimum well, a minimum of like a week, but probably. Um, but maybe end of next month would be the good initial default. Or kind of a month apart. Give you like four weeks or something like that. So... Yeah, but if you're halfway through a month, do you really want it to be 28 days ahead for like four weeks? Probably not. I think, it, well, if it was me, I kind of like using calendars, calendar months as like a boundary. 
So rather than just doing four weeks from today, because I mean, today you could be setting up a goal like any day of the week, um, but want it to be completed on a, a Sunday or Saturday or something. I don't know. Um, but people have different ideas about that. So just for the sake of having a date which is in the future, so that there's at least some distance apart from today and when the goal ends. Let's do the end of, not this month, because we could be on that last day. This is just a quickie um, fix. Um, let's do end of the next month. Because then we've always got at least four weeks. Maybe eight or nine, but at least it's a good distance. So let's do that. Uh, and we want that in the edit goals because we're just doing that here. We could maybe pull this out into um, into the add goals route, add goal route. But yeah, but if we do this here. We'd always get a default date, which we kind of want. And we can always override that. Let's do that. OK, so that math. All right, so that's date now. We need to do a little bit of maths on this date to add month and find the end date. So let's um, let's take that out and put it in a function. I think. Uh, what are we calling this at the moment? Still calling it a Unix timestamp. Okay, let's do um, boot end date because it's actually the end date right here again. And we will do um, the date equal new date What can we do there? We do that. It gives us because we need a date object, don't we? Because I believe we can do a set month on an object. So it's the month of a specified date according to the current set year. And it takes a day value. Oh, that's cool. So, and it'll work out the correct day if you do silly things with the numbers. Add the number of days given by current day of the month to the First day. What? Because of you, we'll add the number of days given by the current day of the month to the first day of the new month. Turn second. All right, yeah, because round and round. So if it's 
<clears throat> if it's adding that number of days, well done, current day of the month would have an impact on the behaviour but subject will add the number of days given by the current day of the month to the first day of the new month. Oh, that's maybe talk. Oh, that's not talking about the actual day of value. You're overriding that, aren't you? So, oh, I reckon I can do something sneaky there. All right, let's try this. So, let's just create. Okay, we've got a, a date object, um, and we're going to set that date to. I do a set month and we're going to do cat month plus two and then take away a day because that will so we're in April now, it's going to go May, June, and then we're doing the day of that month as minus one, which takes us to the last day of the previous month, which is what I'm wanting. Let's try that. And then we will return. Uh, get time. And that will be divided by a thousand because it's in milliseconds and all that jazz. Uh, so, or math zero. And then we'll use that. So we're going to be passing in an end date, which is the current date plus two months minus one day, taking us to the last day. And then we are getting the seconds from the book and that should do the job. We hope. Deploy, deploy, deploy. There we go. End of May. And I'm in April. That'll do. Right, and there's no errors or anything. Not even warnings, that's good. Uh, so that's that's doing its job as well. I believe I, yeah. So that label's working even though that must be a um <clears throat> svelte plugin thing there going on there. It's not recognizing that this component has an ID. So I'll just have to live with that for the moment. Uh, well, I think I'm done for that, that little component. Uh, I just need to do the reason thing. So this room set default. Date to end of next month. 
sorted. <clears throat> this is my voice. Not enough coffee, or maybe it is the coffee. All right, the last little thing I wanted to do before I start actually dealing with the real data here is I just wanted to fix up that reason um, component because that's, well, that's just terrible. I don't want that. <laughs> right, so we need to constrain it and we need to give it some sort of um, initial initial size that makes sense so uh what we're going to do there so um let's make sure we've got picked oh, i think what we'll do let's go with uh, so i got a uh I wonder, actually i wonder where these things are coming from That's in my globals, isn't it? And it's got a hundred percent here. That's that's gonna be needed too. I could just set uh how often am I gonna be using text areas in this thing? Hardly ever. So if I set like a little default here that I can override, let's do that. We'll do that in the global. Um, set, we'll set some defaults, so we've got form input, uh, that's probably going to apply form text area too. That will cast some um, that'll push it out. I don't know if I need the clears and stuff, but I don't think it's gonna make any difference either. But I bet I need to set a min and max as well because text areas can be changed in size so I might need to do that in a sec did it apply okay yeah so I can break that out but at least it started off maxed out <clears throat> So, okay, so we do need to like, yep, so, so we need to do an extra one here and we're going to do Just do that. Oops. And now I'll lock it. Been just fucking actually. What I might need to do is just see if there's a way to... No, I do... I do want them to be able to put it down to make more space. It's just that the form's going to generally be constrained in width. Because it's... We're working on... It could be... Uh, on an iPad, you know, like a, a phone or... Whatever. We're going to override that stuff later, potentially, to make it more usable on a desktop and so on. Okay, 
Right, so that is now, yeah, okay, cool. Can't break out of the box, but I can move up and down. What's the initial size? That's not enough. Hmm. Yeah. Got a bit mad there. Let's make that five. I think it'll just look a little bit more usable then. Uh, we want to do that over here. Because we're just over on the safe area, right? This instance of a text area, we want five. Five rows. I think that'll probably look a little bit better. And just gives a better impression of what you can do. So I am going to wibble 100 times by the 30th. And my reason is because you got to wibble, wobble every day. But when I hit save, Nothing happens um, because we haven't hooked it up with anything yet, but we'll get to that. Um, but I am out of time, so let's just uh, commit that. And we're good with that. That's the basics there. So let's go. The reason. and push it for safety that's that so that's good we've fixed the end date component we've given the reason text area a little bit of uh, constraints so uh, he says Oh well, at least it doesn't go to nothing. That'll do for the moment though. We can always fix that later. But yeah, we're good. All right. Um, I think that's it for today. I've got to go and get ready for my Monday morning meeting and stuff. So um, I've run out of time. Um, so um, until next time. Uh, take care.